Hey everybody, we hope you're having a great Sunday. It's dinner time at our house and we are craving pizza. So being on this low carb diet, it's not that easy. It's not like we can pick up the phone and just order a pizza. We have to make ours. And we have tried several low carb pizza crusts. We've tried the cauliflower crust. We have tried the chicken crust and it just does not taste good. That is our opinion and our opinion only. We have made, for the last uh, couple of diet attempts, unfortunately, um, we have made what's called a fathead pizza crust. It is really good. It is the best crust that we've ever had. Any eating it, one. Yeah, eating it hot or cold, it is really, really good. Doesn't take that many ingredients. You don't have to worry about rise time. The only downside is, if you're a deep dish pizza lover, this one is not going to be for you. So it is on the thinner side, but it's not that hard to make, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to make ourselves a pizza. So let's get to it. What you're going to need for this recipe is three cups of mozzarella cheese. So we've got mozzarella cheese sitting back here. We buy the shredded. You're going to want shredded or shred your own. We're going to need four tablespoons of cream cheese. Now cream cheese normally comes in eight ounce block. One ounce is equal to about three tablespoons. So you're going to need just a little over an ounce of cream cheese. We've got our cream cheese there. And you're going to need two eggs and one and a half cups of almond flour. You're going to need a mixing bowl, some parchment paper, a rolling pin, of course, a spatula, a measuring cup. And we also use this stuff. We buy it at Walmart. It's pizza and pasta magic. We add that into the dough. It, yeah, it's really good. It just gives it that extra special pizza flavor. Yeah, we put it in spaghetti, we put it in pizza, and it's just really, really good. So we're going to get to making this pizza crust, and I hope you guys stick around and join us. Okay, in this bowl here, I have our three cups of mozzarella cheese, and I have our four tablespoons of cream cheese. What you're going to do is you're going to put this in the microwave on about one minute increments and stir it. After every one minute, you want it to get all melty and combined together, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to take this over to the microwave. We're going to melt it down, and I'll be back as soon as we're done. Okay, this is what it looks like after being in the microwave for two minutes. Like I said, I did it at one minute increments, stirring after each time. And I guess it just depends on your microwave and... It's um, cooking temperature. We have an 1100 watt microwave, so it takes about two minutes. So what we're going to do now, I mean, see, it just basically looks like dough. This is our mozzarella cheese and cream cheese melted together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for a couple of minutes just to kind of cool it down a little bit because we're going to be adding some eggs. And of course, we don't want our eggs to cook, but at the same time, we don't want this to cool all the way down to room temperature. So I'm just going to take a couple of minutes, going to beat the eggs up in a bowl, get my almond flour measured out, and get it all incorporated. Okay, now I have the two eggs beaten in a bowl right here. So we're going to add these in. Make sure you get all that good egg goodness out of there. Protein, guys. Eggs are good protein. Okay, got our eggs, we got our one and a half cups of almond flour, get that in there. Now, I will say ahead of time, make sure your hands are washed really, really well. This is not the easiest dough, I will say, to try to incorporate with just a spatula or a spoon. So sometimes you actually have to get in there like with any other dough. You have to get in there with your hands or like you're making a meatloaf. So we're going to give it a try. We're going to mix it up a little bit. Like I said, it's really, really good, guys, and it's worth it. Especially if you're on a low-carb diet and you're craving pizza and you want something that tastes good. Yeah, you make one of these pizzas. Have it by itself or make some hot wings to go with it. Just like going out for dinner. You just got to make sure that you get your almond flour and your egg incorporated into that cheese mixture. 
like I said, when it comes together, it actually looks like dough. It looks like pizza dough. So after we get this all combined, we're going to get out a couple of sheets of parchment paper. We're going to put the dough in, betu in between two pieces of parchment paper. And we're going to start rolling it out. So yeah, I'm going to have to get in the, into this with my hands. So I'm going to go wash my hands really well and get this dough mixed up. And we'll be back. Okay, I forgot to mention I need to add this. We're going to add about a teaspoon of this to the dough before we get to mixing. Okay, um, I already started mixing it, but I just wanted to show you guys. It's really easy to work with. Just toss it around a little bit. Like I said, just do it like you'd be making any other dough or a meatloaf or anything like that. It doesn't get real sticky to your hands because the cheese does have natural oils in it. So... That's about what we're looking for right there. So we're going to lay out some parchment paper and get this between it. And we're going to start rolling. Okay, so we've got our parchment paper laid out on the table now. We're just going to take our dough and we're going to invert it onto the parchment paper. Give it a little hand here. Okay, make sure you get it all. Got that there. Oops, sorry about the clinging. Now, I'm going to try to get this centered a little bit. Now, your pizza thickness is going to depend on how thin or how thick you roll this out. So, this, of all the pizza making, this is the time, this is the part that takes the most time. But even that, it's not bad. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking, and yes, I'm pressing the dough down a little bit onto my parchment paper. Um, a lot of you are probably thinking, oh, it's going to stick to the parchment paper. It's never going to come off. Well, that's okay. We don't have to worry about that because this bottom piece of parchment paper is going to go straight onto our pizza pan and it's going to go in the oven. We're going to pre-bake this crust for about 10 minutes at 400 degrees. So let me get my trusty old rolling pin out. And we're just going to... Press and roll. Like I said, if you're particular about the shape of your pizza, you can always get it rolled out and then take something and cut around it to make it a specific shape or however you prefer, but we're not fussy here. We just, you know, a lot of pizzas are cut in squares. A lot of them are cut in normal slices. As long as we're eating pizza, we don't care what shape it's in, actually. Doesn't really matter. We're just going to press and roll it out. Um, I've never really measured uh, the thickness as far as what I'm rolling it out to. Um, I would say probably, I don't know, what would you say? A quarter, an eighth to an inch to a quarter of an inch, something like that. Just going to move this around. Like I said, if you're if you want it thinner and you roll it out more, you can always add some extra parchment paper if you decide that you you think you're running out of parchment paper room. You can always add some extra. Actually, it's kind of fun. It kind of takes some stress off. So, nowadays, Lord knows, we all need to have a little stress removal of some kind. It's not much harder than making one of the chef for our new pizza kits to take on from the store. Yeah, if you've ever made the Chef Boyardee pizza kit mixes, no, it's not, not any harder than that. Like I said, you can get your kids to working on this. Let them take out some of their energy on rolling the pizza dough out, right? Okay, I think that's about as good as we're going to get it. It's perfect size for us. Now, the top part will peel off just fine. You can see this. Like I said, it's very simple. Not a lot of work involved, guys. Ladies, sorry. I have a bad habit of saying guys. Everybody gets on me about that. So, now's the time where if you want to take it and you want to be fancy, you can go in and take your knife and cut off the outside edges, make it a perfect round pizza crust. Or if you want to shape a heart for your loved one, you can even turn it into a pumpkin, but whatever, whatever tickles your fancy. So, I'm just going to take this. I'm going to roll my... This is our old trusty pizza pan. It's been around the block, guys. I have uh, SOS padded this thing. Cleaned it, scrubbed it. I took ribs off. <laughs> we just use it for everything. 
You can use any pizza pan you want. We're just going to slide this dough right on our pizza pan. We're going to get it in the oven. We're going to let it cook, like I said, at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. And as soon as it gets to the 10 minute mark, I'll bring it back out. We'll show you what it looks like. And then we'll start to get in the toppings on it. While the pizza crust is in the oven baking, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the pizza sauce that we use. We buy this Pastorelli's. Um, we get it at Walmart. We get a lot of our stuff from either Walmart or Myers. But this pizza sauce for people that are on low carbs or even not, um, this is the best one that we personally have found to buy as far as carb count. Um, it has a great flavor. I would even recommend it for people that aren't on a low carb diet if you're making a homemade pizza at home because it just it does have really good flavor but for the people that are watching carbs i wanted to show you something see if i can get this here now i don't know if you can see this or not if i can get it to focus the carb count on here it has six carbs see if i can get it better six carbs but seven grams of fiber so that's actually negative one carb what other pizza sauce have you ever found that actually has negative carb? I know it has a few added sugars. We have to count that, of course. But when it comes to the net carbs, that's just awesome. Anything that you can use like that that's going to make your carb count lower so that you're going to be able to enjoy something even more is all worth it to me. So on our pizza, when it gets done, we're going to be adding some mushrooms. Um... My husband's going to be making stuffed mushrooms, so what he did is after he... You never want to wash your mushrooms, really, in my opinion, because they're like a sponge and they just want to absorb that water. Just take a damp paper towel and clean your mushrooms well, real well. But he took the insides out of the caps and kind of jibbled them up. This can also be used in the stroganoff recipe that we, that we did, the video that we did, um, the poor man's morels. <clears throat> if you like them in vegetable soup, you can put them in vegetable soup. But definitely, I wouldn't throw these away. I would jibble them up, save them, use them in a recipe, anything that you want to do, spaghetti, anything like that. But for tonight, we're going to be putting on some mushrooms. We've got some tricolored peppers. We always buy those on sale, like most people probably do. Cut them up, store them in the freezer. Anything to save a buck nowadays. Um, we've got some onions. Um, my husband took um, a sausage patty and cut it up and he microwaved it and cut it up into pieces because he likes sausage like that on his pizza. We're going to be doing some pepperoni. Obviously, we're going to be doing the cheese and we're going to be sprinkling some more of this pizza and pasta magic on there. Like I said, they sell the pizza pasta magic at Walmart. They always, it's like everything else, they hide it off to the side and make people search for it. You find it, you try it, I think you'd really like it. Got it at Ollie's, too. Yeah, Ollie's also has it. Well, they did have it, so, you know, they always, every store changes things up. But we're going to wait on the pizza crust to get done. Won't be much longer, and we'll be back. Okay, hot out of the oven, and this is what the crust looks like. Um, we decided we are going to go ahead and trim this far edge over here, um, just because it is, like, lifted up over the edge of the pizza pan a little bit we're not going to throw it away though we're going to make a little piece of pizza out of it but this is what it looks like it doesn't stick to the parchment paper like i said it's going to have to cook a little more because we got to put the toppings on it yet but it's not super thin i don't know if you guys can see that see underneath it's getting a nice golden brown that's exactly what you want in a good pizza so i'm going to get this set up we're going to start getting our toppings on all right, time to add the sauce. I like to use my trusty old um, pastry brush. That's what I call it anyway. I guess everybody has different names for it, but we're going to put some sauce on here. And like I said, you know, it's up to you how much sauce you want to use. But you feel um, free with this because it's yeah, no I mean, carb. You know, you still have to watch your sodium and stuff, but a good pizza always has a good amount of sauce. So we're going to get this brushed on here. I like to take it all the way to the edges. Nice amount of sauce. You want to bite into pizza and know that you're really eating pizza. So if it runs over a little bit, it's not really going to matter. It's on your parchment paper so you don't have a big mess to clean up when you're done. 
Nobody wants to have to clean a crusty pizza pan, I know. So. Like I said, we have did this with wings before, and it's just like going to a pizza place or a bar and having pizza and wings. Man, you can't beat it. All right. Get that spread out a little bit. Kind of make an even layer of sauce. How's that look there? That looks pretty good. All right. There's the sauce. Got that done. Okay, now, give me the cheese. What I'm going to do is I always take a little bit of cheese um, underneath my toppings just to give it a little cushion. Also to help absorb some of the moisture because like mushrooms and peppers, they have a little bit of natural moisture. So not very much. Just going to do a little sprinkle of cheese. I know we're all about cheese, right? But let me tell you, um, I know that this crust is made with a lot of cheese, but you can't taste it's, the fact that it's made with cheese. Yeah, it doesn't taste like cheese. It has the texture of a pizza crust. And I'm going to take some Pizza Magic. Just going to sprinkle a little bit of that on there. You don't want to add too much because we have it in the crust too. But we're just going to add a little bit for that flavor. Okay. Now, get some pepperonis going. I'm going to add some pepperonis. I'm not going to bore you guys with this. I'm going to go ahead and do the pepperonis. Um... When we move on to the next topping, then I'll turn it back on. Okay, we got all of our pepperoni on there, as you can see. Um, usually pepperoni doesn't have any carbs. You'd have to look at the package of the, the brand that you buy. Of course, you do have to watch the sodium content, but we're not going to be eating the whole pizza tonight, right? Um, I will say that even though the shape is off, this is equivalent to a large pizza, if not a little bit bigger than a large pizza. So we have our pepperoni on there. We're just going to go and sprinkle our sausage around. I'm not too keen on the sausage, but he really likes it. But Yeah, I could just eat sausage and mushroom pizza all the time. Yeah. That's why we only did one sausage patty. I mean, you could be... I would rather have some Italian sausage and brown it up and crumble it on there. Um, he really likes breakfast sausage, so... One of these days, we'll get around to making a breakfast pizza. So... All right, we got our sausage on there. Now we're going to do some mushrooms. Got to love the mushrooms. Yeah, like she said, some of them are from the caps. We're going to have the video on later on the stuffed mushrooms, and some of the mushrooms are left over from the stroganoff yesterday. I'm like I listening. said, just have fun with it. Let your kids get in here and help you make it. Yeah. You can make any kind of pizza you want, barbecued chicken, Hawaiian pizza, or... Yeah, once you get the crust down, the rest is up to you, and like I said... Even if you're not on a low-carb diet and you want to give the crust a try, by all means, go for it. So, all right. And onions. Gotta have onions. I don't know about you guys, but we love onions on pizza. Yeah. The more onions, the better. So, when you get to be our age, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Onion breath. Yeah. <laughs> We love it. All right. Lots of onion. Like I said, whatever toppings you choose to put on, whatever your family favorites are. Um, I like black olives too, but I decided, nah, not going to do any of these today. Putting on some tricolor bell peppers. Now, um, because we did have ours frozen, we took them out ahead of time, let them thaw out, took a little paper towel and kind of soaked up some of the moisture. So, you don't want anything that's going to be too super wet on your pizza. You don't, nobody wants a soggy pizza. No, nobody likes soggy pizza. Okay, and now for the grand finale. Can paper towel, please. Okay. We are going to top it with the cheese. What do they call that? The Pierre de Resistance or something like that? The Resistance. <laughs> whatever, that, whatever that means. The grand finale. Oh, uh, the grand finale. Okay. Like I said, it doesn't matter if your cheese um, gets over onto your parchment paper. You're just going to cut the pizza up and throw it away when it's done, the parchment paper. So, don't have to worry about cleaning up a big mess. 
and that can of sauce has got enough sauce left to make another one or two pizzas out of. So you're not going to, you want to put it in a container and put it in your refrigerator and save it. Yeah. You can't leave it in there too long. It'll, it'll, it'll go bad on you. We've, we've had that happen. You need yeah. to make another pizza in another week or two. Yeah. Like I said, we're probably going to make a breakfast pizza, but I'd say that's about enough, don't yeah. you? I think we're about ready for the All oven. All right. I think this pizza is ready for the oven. We're going to get it in the oven. We're going to let it cook probably about 15 minutes, and we'll show you the finished product. And here it is, hot and fresh right out of the oven. We like our cheese to be a little bit on the browner side, so feel free to do it any way you want. We're going to let this sit for a couple of minutes and cool down, and then we're going to cut us up a slice. Now that's a good look at a pizza. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we've let the pizza cool for a couple of minutes, so we're going to cut it. Normally, we cut it into squares, but we're just <laughs> making it a little aesthetic, I guess, and make it trying to make it more of a, a pizza shape, just to show you guys that it it cuts like a pizza is supposed to cut. So, you got the crisp on the edges. And her husband's rushing her because he's standing back here wanting a pizza. He's starving. Yeah, he's like really hungry. He's been wanting pizza for a couple of days, and oh, I've been lazy. But here we go. Oh, it'd be nice if I cut it all the way through, right? Huh, but who's never ordered a, a takeout and they haven't, like, I still didn't get it. Okay, who's ever ordered a pizza takeout and they didn't get it cut all the way through? So you got to go back and cut it. I don't know if you can see that steam coming off. Put it on the plate. Hold it up. Hold it up. I was trying to show the crust. Yeah, I was trying to show it. See? I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Yeah, it's really good. Looks just like a pizza crust. Tastes just like a pizza crust, too. Yummy, yummy pizza time. Um, I'm going to try to find the original recipe, and if I can, I will link it in the description below, in the description box below. But thank you guys for joining us. I'm sorry it's an extra long video. But sometimes it takes a little time to make something that's this delicious. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Have a great Sunday. And I hope you all have a good week. Happy fall, y'all. Bye-bye. Hey, one more thing I wanted to show you. This is the underside of the pizza. Nice and golden brown. Just like we like it. And yes. Stringy hot cheese. Can you see the steam coming off of that? Cheese pull. It's, even off of this pizza. It's like a real pizza. Yeah, All right, guys. So Thank you.